So when Blana and I first started doing tricks, um, I thought that her hesitation um, to do like jumping tricks or moving her body around would be greater than it actually is. So in some ways, I may not deal with some challenges that other dog owners face. Um, she was also, you know, has been, it's assumed that she has been blind in one eye for a very long time since she was a puppy. So she's a very long time to adapt. And this is probably all she really knows. However, when we do tricks, especially disc tricks or tricks where she's jumping over things or onto things, um, we have to be really careful building up. You know, her athleticism versus her depth of field, um, it's really important, even if your dog is fully sighted, um, to be responsible with what you're asking them to do. Valana trusts me, um, and it's taken a long time to build that trust on, you know, how, if I ask her to do something, that it's, it's an achievable thing. You know, knowing that she doesn't have to second guess whether she can do it because she trusts me. Um, you know, sometimes I see things going off in a little bit of a tangent here. Sometimes I see people practicing tricks on Instagram or, or Facebook or things like this that are really clearly not in the dog's best interest. You know, having the dog jump off high ledges to catch them over, you know, standing over concrete. Um, at some point you have to realize it's not what your dog is capable of or their margin of error, it's also your margin of error. So Bellana and I are extra cautious when we do any of the jumping tricks, the vaulting tricks you see with disc to make sure that we've built it up and that we both know what to expect from each other. That's part of the deal. So in training any dog, recall is important. Recall is getting your dog to come back to you from a distance. Um, there's lots of videos out there about how to do this. Um, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but the reason why recall is important to us is because Belana doesn't always realize how far away she's getting, um, especially if she, in the I'd like to say it's rarer than it is, but the occasion she goes to chase after something or she goes after a disc that rolls in the woods, you know, in the heat of the pursuit, she might not realize how far away she's gotten from us and we don't want to lose each other. Um, one time she chased a deer across a field, we were out in the country, um, and by the time she stopped the chase, because she had hit the tree line, she looked back and realized how far away she had gotten and got a little bit freaked out and ran right back to us. Um, so. No matter what, whether your dog's fully sighted or not, always work on recall. Get your dog to respond to your visual commands, uh, your verbal cues. These are all really important, especially if Bolana misjudges something or doesn't realize uh, how steep something is or what the ground is like. You know, I give her a lot of credit. She's very, very capable, but there's no need to take those kind of risks. So recall is always a huge thing on our, on our training list. So some of the little things that affect your dog in training um, that you wouldn't necessarily think of are what side to practice, you know, walking on or healing on. Uh, when I first got Belana, it was really important for me to have her heal on my right side. She's blind at her left, so I want it to be the barrier between her and any other danger or obstacle or thing that would come up from that side that she might not see. Um, she doesn't have hypersensitivity to that side of her face, but again, it's easy to sneak up on a, on a dog that's blind on that one side, so I really wanted to be able to give her an early warning about anything that was coming up. When we started doing more obedience training and more of the, um, the AKC testing for the Canine Good Citizen test, uh, we started doing uh, classes at New England Dog Training Club. That's when we're taught, okay, AKC says heel on the left, so then we had to work healing on the left. Um, it's always good to work both. You know, you shouldn't be dedicated to one or the other. I happen to choose to want to have my dog heel on the right and still do on most times. Again, just to be that buffer zone. Um, if other people are walking on the right, that I want, I always want to be that buffer for her. Um, but just a little thing you might not think about, but you know, for any dog, always work both sides. For Bellana, I think it's even a little more important for her to be comfortable with both sides. One of the things that you'll that I kind of take for granted is um, how long it takes her eye to adjust to the light. Just like, you know, if you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or it's really dark, you turn a light on, you know, that light's on, it's really bright. You're in there for about a minute or two, you shut the light off and everything's pitch black again. You know, so Bellana has to deal with that shift in contrast on top of not having depth of field. So she used to be much more afraid of the dark in terms of um, if we were going out for a walk and there was a street that had no street lights and there was a street that had street lights, she would always want to go uh, towards the, the lit end of the street, which from a safety perspective is always a good idea, but I didn't want her to be stressed about, you know, um, a dark street or dark or not being able to see things. So one of the ways that we kind of 
help get comfortable with that is giving her time to adjust to the light. So if it's getting a little bit dark out or we have to go outside, you know, I'll have her on the leash, we'll hang out for a second, I'll give her a treat, I'll ask her for a few basic commands and let her eyes adjust. So then after a minute or two, she can see a little bit better, she feels more confident and she's much more likely to have a relaxed walk and not fear um, not being able to see noises or, or small movement out of the corners of her eye. So one of the things that, um, you know, we went to the vet and we got tested, you know, we actually had the vet look at, look at her eye as well and, you know, they couldn't tell whether it was trauma or she was born with it, so it's kind of a mystery. Um, but one thing that is important is that, you know, I noticed that the eye, you know, still moves as she looks, so it's, the muscles are still functioning. Um, I try to make sure that when she's sleeping, she actually will typically sleep, um, equal on both sides, kind of depending on uh, how she gets comfortable first. But I always try to make sure that eye is closing fully so it's moisturized, she does blink it, um, so it doesn't dry out. Um, she gets eye gooks like every other dog. It's no more, no less because of the eye. Um, there's really no, you know, by all accounts, Balan is one of the healthiest dogs that I, I know. Um, and the eye, as long as you're maintaining it, you're making sure it's not getting irritated, the muscles are still firing. Um, talk to an optometrist if you have a dog that's blind in one eye. Um, again, it's a little bit different for Balan because she still has her eye. It hasn't been removed from surgery. Um, and again, she's probably had this since she was a puppy for as long as she can remember. So she's, her natural habits with it um, are, seem to be preserving it and keeping it healthy. So unless anything, unexpected develops as she gets older. Um, I don't have any additional plans for surgeries for her uh, as long as she's happy and healthy then so am I. One of the little things that I'll do um, multiple times a day depending on what Balana and I are up to is just giving her little warnings if I'm coming up on that side. Again I have to remind myself that she's blind in one eye um, because it never makes itself apparent in our day-to-day -day life. Um, so for example if she has something on her face or I'm gonna pet her one of the things I'll do and this is just for us um, that we've worked on you know if you have a dog um, that has uh, sight issues you may do something different but as I'm putting my hand up or I'm getting ready I'll either call her so she looks at me uh, fully right away if we're just kind of laying around or she's in the car looking out the window I'll sometimes just rub my fingers together like this and you'll kind of get this just this sound so she can hear it coming closer and knows that I'm approaching so she doesn't get nervous um, you know no matter what kind of dog you have no matter what their their physical condition uh, it's always good to let the dog know what's going to happen before you do it um, in terms of you know petting the dog or going to say hey you know that's one of the things you have to worry about little kids with um, is just you know jumping right on the dog or just grabbing the animal so whether your dog has sight in both eyes or um, maybe just one of them always give a little bit of a warning um, if they're not facing you or if they haven't really acknowledged your presence make a little bit of an effort to get the dog to acknowledge you, you acknowledge the pup, and then you can interact. Uh, it's just good manners. All right, so those are some of the most common things that I get asked. If you have any questions about Balana or our training, or, I mean, she's pretty great, so you know, I'm always happy to talk about her and answer questions. Um, if you have a pup that's blind in one eye and you're having struggles, you know, please uh, shoot me a message, let me know. Um, Balana and I hope to help as many people as we can with our experiences, um, whether that's doing disc stuff, whether that's just life stuff. So please, if you want, like us, follow us, give us a share, and we'll see you next time.